Good morning and welcome on Boxing Day. We don't do very many Boxing Day services. Um, always low in, in attendance, but we still wanted to have something available for, for you and for us in our spirituality to mark a Sunday uh, and to mark this Christmas season. But in that unusual nature, there are a few things that will be a little bit unusual as we go through, um, and I'll pick that up, thought up in the sermon. You're really welcome here. I hope you've had a great day yesterday. Um, it was uh, with marked sadness yesterday as I picked up a few friends' Facebook posts that they tested positive that morning and they couldn't host their family or they couldn't go to their family. And so I do understand that for people there's all sorts of mixed feelings this year as we try and uh, focus in and celebrate on the light of the world coming into the world, into the darkness to make a difference and how much we need that. I want to start off um, by just giving a tribute to one of the lights in the darkness and um, a little bit emotional. Uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, I've heard, has died. Um, I heard him preach once. He was a man of small stature and yet an amazingly big and powerful man. Um, when you heard him speak, he spoke in this uh, fairly broad South African action. You'd almost call it a bit like a Scottish brogue. It had a lilt to it and it had a power and a resonance as he spoke. He was deeply passionate about God, um, passionately committed to sharing Jesus with others, believing that what Jesus had done, um, like Paul, was deeply, deeply, deeply important in breaking down barriers and bonds, such that as Paul, he would have echoed that it made one church that was Jewish and Gentile together, and in doing so also was men and women together, people of every ethnic race together, um, people of rich and poor together, they all were united as one in the church under Christ by what he had done by his death and his resurrection. And he probably pointed his finger at us at that point and told us we'd better believe it if you'd ever heard him preach. He was very direct and a powerful preacher and uh, sort of probably much more influential in the South African peace process than he's ever been given credit for in his quiet way talking to people behind uh, doors and then preaching powerfully for it, from it in front of crowds. Um, and the church will deeply miss his physical presence on earth, though he has joined the, uh, the cloud of witnesses in heaven and is praying for us and for the continued ministry of the church, I have no doubt. Um, so remembering that that light has gone out, but that we are celebrating the light has come into the world. Mrs. Toft, would you please light the candles for us? And we're going to uh, share these words. I'll say the words in yellow and we'll all say the words together in white. God our Father, we celebrate that the Saviour is born and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. Lord Jesus, light of light, you come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as a light in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. <clears throat> we're only going to sing uh, twice again we're keeping the numbers and the amount we're singing down uh, just for mutual safety I know that that's a pity because there's so many carols that we could sing um, but we're going to start with that great carol Hark the Herald Angels Sing Hark the Herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory 
greater than newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hailed incarnate deity, placed as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hope the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the hembron prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, bright and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of birth, born to give them second birth. Of the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Please sit. <clears throat> we haven't given you out pieces of paper. If you were um, in the, the last couple of days, you'll have known we gave you out pieces of paper to find, fill in your name uh, for contact details and those that are in your group. Um, what I would ask as you go out is that you either scan the COVID um, symbol or you fill in the, 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 the piece of paper that's below, um, which is on your right-hand side as you leave um, with the stand where the, where the, where the gel is. Uh, and in that way, we know who's been here if we need to contact anybody uh, through test and trace. What we don't need to do today, and the reason we gave it you and you kept left it in your, in your places was we have been wiping down the pews where people have been sitting um, between the services because there's less than three days. But obviously, as we've got next, till next Sunday, everything will be good in that case uh, anyway. So we don't need to go to quite as much of uh, a pernickety way of marking who's here. But we do hope with what we have done that you do feel safe. Um, but obviously it is for you to decide um, whether you're going to receive communion or not as you come for the, for it at the end. But you are all welcome uh, to receive communion. I myself have done my nose swab again today and I am so pleased that I've got to the end of all my nose swabs and they've all been negative. Um, and I haven't had the contingency plans haven't had to be put into, into action. Alan, who's recording this, will know that at the end of all of these uh, PowerPoints, there's been a little recorded sermonette of mine for each of the sermons, uh, which could have been brought into play if we needed to. But thankfully that, th thankfully, that was superfluous, and we can enjoy and celebrate together. Let's focus in on Christmas and this bit of liturgy again to share. Father God, at this time... We thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your only son, Jesus. We rejoice that he has come to be our saviour and friend. We remember that the angels sang glory to God, peace for the world. Jesus has come. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Alleluia. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Alleluia. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, Alleluia. The story goes round about um, houses slowly being moved from being on gas lighting to electricity lighting. And in one home, they went in and they changed it from gas to electricity lighting. And uh, the shock of the lady who owned the house, because all of a sudden with electricity lighting, lighting she could see cobwebs that she couldn't see before. 
And the same with Jesus coming in as light of the world. As his light shines on us, as his life shines on us and shows us his example, it leads us to realise that perhaps we're not living out everything we were called to be as human beings, as people made in the image of God. And so we move to the section of our service where we're going to say our confession and have our opportunity to wipe the slate clean with God. The angel said to Joseph, Mary will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek God's forgiveness through Jesus, the saviour of the world, and resolve in future to live our lives God's way in love and peace with all. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, whose word is come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illume our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And so we come to the first of our readings from Scripture. Thank you, Leslie. The first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to Luke beginning at verse 41. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they could not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they find, found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. 
Why were you searching for me? he asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and men. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Thank you, Mike. Let's pray. Father God, Jesus has come as light into the world. Illume our hearts from this scripture and speak to us the words you want us to hear. Let your spirit be close to each today. Amen. Now, we talked a little bit about disruption earlier. You'll sort of realize that normally sort of themes I've got going in my head for a service get hooked up and Jesus being the light of the world. And those are the sort of the way I do my connection between different sections normally is about the thoughts going on for the sermon. And this sermon, sermon, uh, I I was very tempted. I was very tempted just to sit with Colossians um, and, and just do the easier passage. And I'm not entirely sure that I've ever heard anybody else ever preach on the passage about Jesus as a child. Um, And probably part of it is because exactly how my response to it as a child was uh, when when it would be read in church, which was, (laughs) Jesus was naughty, (laughs) Jesus ran away. (laughs) And that's where we get a little bit icky with the passage because uh, we hold both to Jesus was without sin, but here we find Jesus absconding for three days. Now, as a parent, I know how panicked we've been um, when uh, we've lost one of our children. Andy, who's now 25, used to love when he was bored in Debenhams uh, or or any of the shops and we're doing shopping, to crawl underneath the stacks of clothes. I've said this before. And he'd pick up the size labels and he'd have a pocket full uh, of them. But when when he first did it, we just completely lost him under a stack of coats. And uh, it does look a bit strange around Primark or Debenhams for a grown adult to be crawling underneath the clothing, especially in the ladies' section. Uh, images of a Father Ted episode comes to mind. And, um, and, and just leave that image with you. Equally, uh, we've had the case with foster children. Our first foster child, Harvey, who then went on to adoption. Not, he wasn't our first child. We had other children in on, um, well, we did respite in short term, a very short term cover. Um, but the first one that was there to, to adoption and went to adoption. And Harvey came to us with this uh, cuddly toy moo cow. And it was one of the few words he could say. It was moo cow when he wanted comfort from this. And walking around Primark, he he lobbed it out of the pram and we missed it. Uh, At which point we searched, because we'd been all through Primark in Manchester, we searched all three or four floors that it's on, looking for it and asked at customer service and could not find moo cow, at which he was wailing around Primark, moo cow! Um, If you were there on that occasion, about sort of 10 years ago, (laughs) I'm sorry for the disruption. Um, But when you lose something, it is deeply distressing. Um, But actually, I want to think a little bit around the other side. And how do we resolve the conundrum of me as a child going, it was Jesus being naughty. When some of our carols go, "Ah, kind, obedient, good as he Uh, And we hold theologically that he was without sin. Uh, And even one of our carols says, the cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Um, Which actually I just don't believe. The only occasions that we've had children that haven't cried at the disturbance of something strange like an animal's noise or whatever is actually if they've either been detoxing because then their internal world is in so much turmoil that what's going on out there just doesn't matter or during their time in the womb, they've been in domestic abuse and their exposure to stress hormones has been so high that a cow moves and it's like, 
Ah, piece of cake. And it's all so easy. Um, but going back to the sort of kind, obedient, good as he, um, it's very easy for us to project onto, onto Jesus our cultural norms. And especially if you think back to it, if you've walked down Lime Park and they've told you the story of how uh, that's, the, that's one of the young lords there dressed in a dress, because they were dressed in a dress then in one of the pictures on the stairs, uh, but they would not have gone into parents except for perhaps five minutes in the evening where they'd have told what nanny was done. And, the, and indeed, children in those days were supposed to be not heard and out of way in the house and away from everything. And it's a projection of cultural norms. So how do we unpack that Jesus did the one thing that would probably be most distressing to every parent in there? Uh, and yet it's got into the Gospels. One of the things Luke is very much doing is portraying a picture of Jesus as the Messiah. And, and so we have to say this builds up towards that. And it builds up to, te- to something of the image of what it means in these, especially this before ministry, to be, to be human. And so we need to measure it against what Luke puts as the measuring stick, I think. And that would be the description of the, the summary of the law, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. With in the love your neighbor as yourself is caught, captivated those later six Ten Commandments, starting off with honor your father and mother, that you may live long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And somehow he is portraying Jesus in this context. And in that, you can see that he was sitting with the teachers, taking the place of a teacher. In their culture, which is very different from our culture, you would stand and I, as the honoured teacher, would get to sit. The time that we tend to do that is if you're going to the royal court and the queen sits and everybody else stands sort of thing, or or you can imagine that possibly don't do that quite as much nowadays as they used to do. But in Jesus' day, and so Jesus is starting to show the signs of where he's going. He's taking a rabbi's plate, sitting amongst rabbis, discussing as a fellow teacher with them. And when his parents, who are absolutely distraught, hair pulling out, possibly are just about giving up hope and going to pray at the temple as the last ditch hope. Oh, we'll take this to God in the end. Find him. And he says to them, of course, I would be in my father's house. Of course, I would be honouring God in this. The first of those two commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it captures that off and and finishes off by saying, he went home and was obedient to his parents. Love your neighbor as yourself. Honor your father and mother that you may live long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Think Luke is not trying so much to portray Jesus as being naughty, in the sense of breaking our cultural expectations about what we think children should and shouldn't do, which are more about us, but trying to show Jesus portraying true humanity, honoring God and then honoring his parents. It opens up for us a plethora of questions. One is where is our culture different from what God expects from us? Uh, And all you need to do is move from one culture to another or move from one legal place to another to find that actually what is legally expected for you to obey the law changes as it has today. Anybody going to Wales later? Your rules are different if you go to Wales today as the COVID rules come in. If you're going to Scotland this week, your rules are different in Scotland. And those are all the rules set by the government of the land and the cultural norms are set by the cultural communities. If you go to India, the rules on what you do and what you touch with your right or your left hand are slightly different than here. If you go to Ghana and you wave like this at a child, which is just what I'd do as a small wave. In Ghana, it means come here. 
So when I visited Ghana, and I'd see a child just go, and it'd just be, hi. They'd all come running over. And I'd be going, what's going on? And it took a while for somebody to say, that is that. And telling you the different rules. But what mattered to Jesus is not so much the cultural rules and the legal rules of man, but to actually honour God and to love your neighbour. And Luke portrays this in a story of his childhood. And it reminds us that there's a core to what it is to be human. It's not bound up in our culture and it's not bound up in the law of the land. It's bound up in who we are created to be as God, uh, people who bear the image of God, who reflect the light of God into the world. And in that sense, it picks up the passage from Colossians that Leslie read, that we are to put on above all things love and live love out in the world, a love for God and a love for one another. So I don't think Jesus was being naughty in this passage, though I did when I was a child, and it was a great glee to me that there was a time when Jesus was naughty. But I do think it is Luke starting to portray that even before the start of his ministry, Jesus was showing true humanity and loving God and deeply passionate about God, spending three days with the teachers loving God and loving his neighbour and deeply passionate about being obedient to his parents. And in the conflict of those, working that out as he went along so that he lived out that life that was without sin that was truly living humanity in the world as it was created to be from the very concept of humanity, our true Adam, who could then be our true substitution, dying on the cross from us, bursting from the tomb and offering to us new life. And as we come to communion today, in the middle of this Christmas season where we think around the the, the infancy and the childhood of Jesus, Just hold on to this, that even from his birth, even from his childhood, Jesus had come to be the substitute for you and me so that the light that he brought into the world, we could reflect to others and the true people of God could be revealed who would then be a light to the world, ever growing, ever shining more broadly, ever shining across the world so that the light of Christ was seen in every corner of the world as it was shown to us by Desmond Tutu in his deeply compassionate and humble life in South Africa, working against apartheid, supporting the emergence of a new government, preaching passionately for Jesus. And as it is served in yours and my life, as we too seek to live out the love of God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love of neighbor as ourselves. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this quirky little story of Jesus where he absents himself from his parents to spend time in the temple and with the teachers. Help us, too, to find the pattern to live out our life where we are fully devoted to you and fully devoted to love our neighbour. And give us your spirit that we might truly reflect the light of Christ into the world. Amen. Do you want to stand as we um, make a statement about our belief? It's going to be done in the responsive form. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. So please sit as David brings us our prayers.
Let us pray. Almighty God and Eternal Father, on this first Sunday after Christmas, to whom a thousand years are as a single day, as we join the whole creation and celebrate with joy the Word made flesh, hear our prayers for the Church and for the world. We pray at this time for all in your Church, in every part of the world and in our diocese and deanery. We pray for bishops Mark, Sam and Julie. Pray for Stuart, our vicar, our ministry team, our pastoral workers, and all who help with the mission and stewardship of St Mary's and St John's. Lord, in celebrating the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that your Church is able to reach out with renewed vigour and relevance to the daily lives of all God's children, to generate a healthy and a just society throughout the world and in our community. Lord, in your mercy. To your love and power we commend the congregations of the Church. May they set aside any failures in the past year and summons up the courage to tackle the duties that lie ahead. Stir the members to new loyalty to Christ and may they not let a day pass without a winning victory over the world, the flesh and the devil. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, as she approaches her platinum year. Pray for all leaders in governing countries across the world. Pray that your Holy Spirit may rest on all who bear responsibility for governments among nations. Give them wisdom, courage and strength that they may make and maintain a true and lasting peace and that people of the world may dwell together with enmity and without fear to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for many millions in the world who are ill-fed, ill-clad and ill-housed. Lay this burden of misery on the conscience of those who have power to release enough food or funds to meet their needs. We pray for all the missions we support at St Mary's. We pray for Tear Fund, Christian Solidarity Worldwide, CPIS, Oasis in Manchester and CMS. We continue to pray and give thanks for all the mission and community outreach activities we provide through our churches in this parish, sharing Christ with others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who have felt lonely and isolated over this festive time and during this pandemic. We pray for those who find themselves in financial difficulties, who are feeling worried and insecure about their future. We bring before you those close to us who are going through difficult times or who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Lord, send out the Holy Spirit to comfort them. Lord, in your mercy. Remember those known to us who have left their mark on our lives by giving us love and laughter, but have gone before us to be with Christ. We pray especially today for the family and friends of those who we know have passed away. We tell them in their hearts, always knowing that you, Lord, held them in yours. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, Mary gave birth to a son who offers salvation to the whole world. May we, like Mary, both treasure him in our hearts and bring him to all men. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love the little do si we, we can do so that I don't walk too close to, uh, to David, etc. Um, as we make sure that we stay safe. Um, as we, therefore, and, and also as we come to communion, um, remembering uh, that we're sort of 
if you can remember the flow that we're trying to do around church. So we come out of the aisles in the centre, we then walk down, out and back up uh, side aisles. And pretty much in every case, I think, we can just come back in at the other side of the side aisles. And so that way we're going to um, keep that bit of social distancing. But it also means we're not sharing the peace. And that's one thing I do miss, I must say, in that theological understanding that we together are the church, uh, united in Christ, and in understanding it in the way that Desmond Tutu did, that in so doing, God has broken all barriers down that divide us and united us as a family. Um, but bearing in mind that we can't hug each other, we can still share those words together. At the first Christmas, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. As we come to communion, I will be doing it again from the north side. I know that's not quite in the, in the normal custom and culture of this church. It's not actually illegal. It's part of the old ancient traditions of reformed. Sorry, you're looking at me. Yeah. The, <laughs> so if you remember in the reformed church, often they pushed the high table back against the wall so that the priests couldn't get behind. And they did it from the north side. A little bit, yeah, you never knew. There's, there, there, I'll, I'll, if you want to talk to me later, Margaret, I can explain north, north east and west sides to you uh, as, as they were in the, in the different traditions. Um, but it, just so that you know, I'm doing something that maybe it seem a little different to you, but it's still perfectly legal. Word made flesh, life of the world, in your incarnation you embraced our poverty. By your spirit may we share in your riches. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave it thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him, his body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave it thanks and said, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us his body and his uh, and it may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise. 
and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We make this prayer to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We say the prayer of preparation. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you. Eat and remember that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son shared at Nazareth the life of our earthly home, help your church to live as one family, united in love and obedience, and bring us, at last, to our home in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Um, when I was talking about traditions before, it suddenly struck me that you also may find it slightly strange that the Holy, Holy, Holies is right at the end of that communion prayer. Um, Margaret's nodding head. Actually, it is one of the earliest formats of communion prayer. I think it is Hippolytus uh, who, in about the second or third century, one of the earliest recorded 
um, full communion prayers where they put the Holy Holies at the end. And so when, because I was at theological college when they were just bringing out all, the, um, all of the new liturgies, and we had somebody come in and sharing to us, and there was thought, we, we got into this discussion, and he said, actually, it's the earliest writ form, written form of communion prayer that we know is to have the Holy Holies at the end. So you actually just did an ancient tradition, if you wanted to know um, how that all works out. Um, we, do, we do change customs and are... Um, Therefore, and we then believe that they've always been like that. Um, but Jesus cut through that in his ministry. He focused on obeying the commandment, he, the summary of the commandments he gave to love God and to love neighbor. And that news is still good news for the world because it still cuts through and makes a difference. And that news, that news brings good joy to people. And that's why we're singing the final carol that we're doing, which is joy to the world. <clears throat> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Let us our songs employ. What fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations proud. The glories of his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. In Christ we see the true humanity revealed, and we are called to follow his example and shine that light into the world. And as you do that, may the joy of the angels, the faith of Mary and Joseph and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and be with you and remain with you this Christmas season and forevermore amen and so loving God and loving your neighbor go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ amen